Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Welcome to the next episode of 911 and the last episode of 911 we'll be watching for a while. A lot of people on my channel already know, but for those that have not watched all the talking bits of my 911 episodes, this is the last episode of the original series of 911 I'm going to be watching for a little bit of time because next week I'll be starting 911 Lone Star. And I'm watching the whole series in the order they were released, which means first half of season 3 of 911, all of season 1 of Lone Star, which I think is 10 episodes, and the last half of season 3 of 911. So, I'm excited to watch this one because it's a mid-season finale, it's a Christmas episode, look at the title, which we'll get to, but also, maybe they're going to end on a big cliffhanger, maybe it's going to be a really nice ending, I don't know. I am going to miss watching it though, like, just 10 episodes, or 10 weeks of not watching now and one is going to be difficult for me because I'm really enjoying the show and I'm really invested in the characters, but I'm really excited to watch the new show. But we'll get to that next week when we join the new team over on now and one Lone Star, I'm talk about all my thoughts then, but yeah, if you're excited to watch that, let me know down below. Let's go back to 911 for this episode. So the last episode that we watched was called Fallout, episode 9 of the season. And had the fallout, sort of, of Hens crashing to the woman. It didn't take the really dramatic turn that I expected. It was quite a, a, a nice episode in some ways. Like, they all were in therapy. We had Maddie in therapy, Eddie in therapy, and Hen in therapy. Hen had a lot of emotions to deal with because she felt really guilty over killing the woman understandably, although ultimately she was ruled out. It wasn't her fault, it was a problem with the electricity circuit board sort of thing, and so none of it was Hen's fault, but you would feel guilty because you were in that car or truck that hit the car, you were behind the wheel, you've got to feel some sort of guilt, but luckily by the end of the episode, she was back at work, she was back driving the fire truck again, and it was really nice moments for her last episode. Eddie got some help, Maddie got some help, but also Maddie had to deal with the fact that the woman got in touch with her because she'd shot her old husband, so Maddie went to help save his life. But then the woman went back to him anyway, even though she'd already shot him and admitted that he was a horrible person. The second that he was saying the nice things to her, like, oh, I'll forgive you, don't worry, she went back. So Maddie had a lot of issues with herself to deal with around that, and also the guilt she felt for killing Doug. But the main thing that I think maybe carries on, maybe for this episode possibly, is the fact that Bobby was involved in like a radioactive hazardous waste sort of situation. He was exposed to radiation for a, a long amount of time, long enough that he had to be like, um, to really take you, uh, decontaminate is the one I'm looking for, spray him down, take him into little tents and all that, did all the tests, they weren't happy with all of his results, but on the most part we're happy, but there's a couple of little results they're still waiting for. He seems okay, but you just never know in these situations when things are going to rear the ugly heads up, so I presume that's going to be a part of this episode. It's called Christmas Spirit, which makes me excited because it's a Christmas episode. The Christmas episodes are normally pretty fun, but because it's a mid-season finale, I don't know, I am expecting there to be a little cliffhanger to lead us out to the next half of the season as well, which is going to be hard because it's going to be a long break for, for me, probably for you guys when you watched it on li live as well. So let's jump into the episode to find out what it's about. If you enjoyed the video, please let me know down below in the comments where you thought the episode. Subscribe to my channel if you're not already. And if you're watching over on YouTube and you're interested in watching the full length reaction to this episode, as well as the first bunch of episodes of Lone Star, please take a look at the Patreon link down below in the description box, where there'll be full length reactions to Lone Star as well. Let's jump into 911, Season 3, Episode 10, Christmas Spirit. Joyful and triumphant. Excuse me. Hi. Excuse me. I Beautiful singing I'm voice. Ooh. That kind of thing annoys me when someone's still placing. Excuse me. Holy crap. Excuse me. I'm looking for it's a, a, a duck that dances. It's down. Emotional display on seven. On seven. Okay. Oh, I guess it's going to be the last one. And someone fights her for it, maybe. The way her day is going. Do people really shop like this? Christ. I don't think you can see the irony. I'm going to need you to hand me that pepper spray. Oh, Santa. <laughs> okay. Thank you, thank you so much for saving that. I mean, at least if I have to go to jail, I'm leaving with what I came for. Sorry, but that toy's going into evidence. What? Do people really kill that at Christmas at shopping? Oh, hey, no, no, of course not, and don't you worry. 
He's not really Santa. He's not real. God. Buck, what are you doing? You just pretend. Santa's pretend? That's right. Buck, he... Buck, Buck. Buck stop it. Santa Claus isn't real. <laughs> 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 when have you known your mother to wait this late in the season to have her tree up? Oh. Well, it's a lot this year. I mean, I don't think anyone's really feeling the Christmas spirit. And that's why oh. we are going to spread some holiday magic. Is Athena not feeling very Christmassy this year because of things that happened? Untangle these lights. And we are going to do everything that we can to make it special for her. Right? Okay. Yay! I love the relationship between Michael and Bobby. It's so cute. How supportive he is of his new... <laughs> The new dad figure, like it's, you just never see it in TV shows. It's so so nice. Oh, what's all this? Hey. Michael. You certainly did. Oh, it's a beauty. Yeah, but thank God this is the last test for now. They've all been clean, so if doctor says he has no reason to think it'll get worse. I really feel Once for him. Results, then we can breathe. Yeah, uh, I'm afraid so. I, I got a lot of work to do. I love to see you. I guess he needs to feel really lonely because even though he's got this family, My man. he's not here. Bye. And he's single now. He's probably feeling very lonely. Trying to cram in as much Christmas cheer between now and then. <laughs> wow. That'd be nice to bring the boys together for a play date. I knew it was going to be Bobby, bu bu <laughs> uh, Buck, and All right, Christopher. <laughs> I mean, can I spend Christmas with you? Don't let me cry. Just don't do it. Buddy, but uh, I'm gonna be working on Christmas with uh, with your dad. Stupid work. Oh. Maddie, are you okay? Yeah, I just really wasn't expecting this. Christmas came early. Yeah, it is always at Christmas. Even now, he can't let me have any peace. Oh, it's from. I'm sorry. This just feels like blood money. Will? But it isn't. It's your share of the marital assets. I thought I wasn't entitled to anything legally. The Slayer statute only applies to murder. The Slayer statute? Oh, that's an awful title. Maddie, that money is the Lisa Doug owed you. Yeah, that's fair. I'd be really intrigued to see what she does with it, because some people would love it, but like, yeah, I've used all this money, huh? Some people just don't want anything to do with it and just get rid or donate. But it's for a good cause. Not letting these babies out of my sight. They're not good on them. a little early Christmas gift to myself. I'll carry these out. Sir, you can't carry on golf clubs on no. the plane. PSA policy. You'll have to check them. <laughs> oh, come on, really? Oh, come on, really? Clubs. No. You immature. No. <laughs> Please be gentle with them. Uh -huh. Oh my god, get a grip. <laughs> no. Holiday hustle, damn it. Come on. Oh. What an absolute dad. No, 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 no. 911, what's your emergency? Is he still alive? How? How? Nothing appears to be broken. What's not the compressor? There we go, Oh, no. Shame. Was this your first nosebleed? Have your gums been bleeding? Do you have a rash anywhere I can't see? <laughs> what are you doing? Diagnosing me? <laughs> yeah. No, it's our real problem. We have a tie for Christmas dinner. <gasps> Christmas five dinner. votes for burgers and five votes for Chinese. I think Ooh, voted Chinese. Chinese food, I voted turkey. Huh. You were the only one. The falafel place Chinese. got more votes than turkey. You're an important person in my life, Bobby. One of the most important. Aww. I don't know what I would do. If anything were to happen to you. That's so sweet. Have you been back there? To Hershey? Oh god. She's about to make me cry. <laughs> you want me to go to Big Bear? To what? Relive that nightmare? I want you to go back to where he hurt you the most and talk to him out loud. And I want you to let him go. Mm. Oh, I thought you had a shift. Michael? Michael! The hell? Is he drunk? My ex-husband, he snores. Come again? 
Michael's in there. In our bed? Mm-hmm. Why? I didn't have the heart to wake him to ask. See, that's the nice report. She's just like, why? Rather than, like, kicking and screaming and shouting. Hi. Good morning, Michael. <laughs> yeah, this is awkward. Have you been drinking? What? No. You sure? Listen, I, I, I've been having trouble sleeping. And, and my doctor prescribed sleeping pills. I'm sorry. Very sorry. Michael. Michael. <laughs> I like it. I don't want to watch it again. And I forgive myself for loving you too much. For staying too long. And for not dying right next to you. So today I'm going to leave you here. I am going to run out of these woods and I am going to live. I survived you, Doug. Oh, God. And I will never be sorry for that. Yeah, you go. Fucking you go, Queen. Help! My mom fell down. Something's wrong with her. She won't wake up. Can you tell me your name and address? Leo. 2749 Elmer Avenue. Oh, Leo. Oh, okay. Leo, it's like every, every kid's worst nightmare, isn't it? Do you know what happened? You said that she fell. Mom, please. Mom, you have to wake up. Oh, I don't like it. Can I don't you tell like she's it. breathing? I don't know. I don't know. <gasps> okay, look at her chest. Is it moving up and down? No. I want you to put your cheek against her face, right near her mouth. No, she's not breathing. Leo, how old are you? Um, 10. Right, paramedics are on their way, but it would be... Oh, I don't like someone it. Someone could do CPR until they get there. Do you think that you can do that? I don't know. I really don't like it. <laughs> okay. Okay, now press down as hard as you can until you feel her chest move. Use all of your weight if you have to. Oh, I think I did it. Four. I really hope he stays alive. Oh, it, yeah, that happens. Happens. You just need to keep going. But if I can find my way. You gotta pause. Good, good. Say, so don't traumatize this kid on Christmas, please. The police officer wouldn't let me go with my mom. Did I in trouble? Is it because I heard her? No. I didn't mean to. Of course not. I think you probably saved her life. Cap, children and family services are on their way. Copy that. What is going on? He's a drunk. Or something more. The doctors don't think these things are related because I do. I think they're related too. To me, not sleeping. No, I'm so sleep deprived. I'm probably legally drunk right now. I don't believe that. This is my first Christmas alone. <laughs> Come on. You're not alone. You have a family that loves you. I love you. I love you. <sighs> I love you too. My God, what, why is this episode going sad all of us today? And everything's making me want to cry. <sighs> My lab results were posted. And? Clear across the board. Oh. Oh, I can finally breathe again. We got about five hours till that alarm goes off. Let's see what else I might be willing to say. <laughs> <to>. oh. <laughs> oh. What am I doing? Looking for another tube of benzocaine. I know, I've already been through. Huh. Okay, Mom, I gotta go. I've been pretty lucky in my life that I've only had two things now and again. I'm just waiting for the moment when things start to go wrong, but two things are so painful. She blew. <laughs> Medication 
medications we should know about. Benzocaine, toothache gel. She used the whole thing. And a trash can full of empties. Oh, Too much benzocaine. Okay. Benzocaine, overuse can prevent the body from releasing red blood cells. Oh. Fair. <laughs> Interesting. So how quickly do you go back to being... Why is she bleeding chocolate syrup? Because blood thinner, boy. That hemoglobinemia causes her blood to appear much darker than normal. Yeah. How long does she go back to calling normal color? Blue light, hence the Smurf lady. That hemoglobin level's dropping, skin color's turning back to normal. Oh, okay. Oh, my God. That's impressive how quickly you go back to normal. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Nina, what are you doing here? We came to save you. Someone said you were ordering takeout for Christmas dinner. <laughs> I did vote for turkey. Oh, I love you Christmas dinner, like the proper roast potatoes and parsnips and Yorkshire puddings, meat, carrots, veg, mash. Oh, it's so good. Stuff in. Oh. The social worker said that he had to stay at the group home during the holidays. She did, so I convinced the social worker to let me bring the group home here. Oh, they're all here. Cool. Nice. Good. She said there's a serious overcrowding problem. Not enough foster parents to go around. Foster parents? This is gonna sound crazy. Foster parents? Maybe we should consider... We have an appointment with a social worker on January 3rd. <laughs> one way to have a family, right? Mom! You're here! Hey, Talk about me cry again. Don't do it. It wasn't easy. But I'm really glad I did it. Good. And I finally feel free. Alright, let's eat before the bell rings. Shall we? Yeah. Food, 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 food. I think your New Year's resolution should be to use that head for good instead of evil. I will definitely put that top in my Oh god. <laughs> They did some scans. Oh, well. They found a mass. <sighs> Headaches, a fall, ending up in the wrong bed. It's a brain tumor. It's a tumor. What, uh, what, what, what can I do to, you know, just, just don't say anything. Just let me have this Christmas. Hey, uh, mom wants to take a picture with everyone. All right, absolutely. Michael. Come on, let's go. <sighs> One, two, three. Merry Christmas! Poor Michael. Okay, that was my reaction to the mid-season finale of season three of 911 Christmas Spirit. And as expected, like with most episodes of 911, there's lots of fun stuff here, and there's a lot of sad stuff here. <laughs> there was a lot more sad stuff than I expected for a for a Christmas episode. I thought maybe we'd find out that Bobby has got cancer, or that there'd be one storyline that might be really upset. But there was multiple moments which I'll talk through. Let's talk about the more fun ones that happened. So we had some really fun calls that they went on. We had like the the runaway kind of um, carriage truck, I don't know what they're called, where they put the bags on for to go into the planes, and there was the golf clubs actually set down on the pedals, and it went around and around, someone got sucked into the blades of a plane, but miraculously survived, because the golf clubs that we'd seen the dude get all, like, obsessed over, uh, managed to, like, wedge the blades enough that the dude got sucked in, but didn't get any major injuries, never got killed, never got cut up, was pretty much in one piece and was fine, which was really, really, really lucky for him. And we had like some fun, like the girl that turned blue, which is something I've heard about before, people turning blue. I knew it was some sort of poisoning, I think, because obviously skin can turn yellow as well, which I think is like um, a liver thing. But yeah, turning that kind of blue was kind of really shocking. And it's, it really surprised me as well how quickly, although it does make sense from a medical point of view, I don't know whether it's just, whether it's elevated for TV or re whether realistically your skin will turn back to normal that quickly, which is quite impressive really. Um, but yeah, it's really interesting to see those kind of things and learn a little bit more about the medical stuff as we watch the show. Now, don't be wrong, we'll learn stuff every episode because they'll tell us about various different accidents and injuries and whatnot. And some of it will sink in, some of it won't. But I like when we do learn those little things and 
not that hopefully we'll ever have to use it in real life, but it's it's good to have those kind of knowledge, that kind of knowledge, and learn those things whilst watching this kind of show. Like when you watch medical shows like Grey's Anatomy or ER, those kind of things, it's just fun to kind of like pick up little bits of information that you know and knowledge to expand your knowledge, and you so you can use it in like conversations in the future. It's pretty cool. I also like that it touched on various different parts of Christmas, which I probably the past Christmas episode probably did as well because I remember. I don't remember much of the last Christmas one. I remember the guy who was stuck in the box in the plane. I think, was that Christmas one where he went back to try and watch his daughter's recital? I think that was Christmas. I remember that bit. But um, I like there was the woman at the beginning who was stuck in the shopping. And do people really shop like that at Christmas? Now, I know it's intense. I know there's always like hot toys that everyone wants to get and everyone wants to rush in to grab them. But do people really like. I know people drive into car parking spaces in front of other people. I've seen that happen. But do people really like shove each other out of the way and steal Christmas presents out of people's hands and then get really aggressive over it. Is that a thing? Now, I know some, like, horror story videos from, like, Black Fridays and things like that. But I just don't... Just, I just don't see why. Like, I get you want to get your kids a certain toy, but if you can't get it, you can't get it. It's, like, it's not the end of the world, you know? And if, if you brought a kid up to respect they get what they get, then they should be happy with whatever presents they get. And if you can't get that one present they're desperate for, yes, it's a shame, but is it worth... People were like shoving each other through the door. That woman ended up getting really mad and got the pepper spray out. I was pepper spraying everybody. Is it worth that to get a single toy for your kid? That says more to me about how you parent your child than it does about the child. Because I know people who always get like the top high end things for the kids, right? But I also have one of my best friends. Her kids get not like the best things that are on the market. They get like some second-hand stuff and whatnot, because that's how they've always had Christmas. And also, how they do Christmas in the day is their daughter uh, opens things throughout the whole day. Like, where's most Christmas present, Christmas days in the morning? You rip everything open. As do I. With hers, like, they'll open a couple of presents in the morning. They don't play with that. And then they'll a couple more. Like, all the presents will be there in a pile ready to go, but that kid res- loves what she gets enough that when she opens something, she wants to play with it for a while. And then she'll open something else and she'll play with it. If it's, like, toys and whatnot, obviously some things, like, books... Maybe film, maybe, maybe you can't, but, you know, it, it, they have a whole day of Christmas, and sometimes there's presents to open the next day, because they're, they've brought the kid up enough to respect that they get, to respect what they get, and to be happy with whatever they get. So it just, it always shocks me when I see things like that, where people are, like, getting so violent to get Christmas presents. I know I've been talking a while about this one scene, but it just really, really shocks me. So let's talk about our characters. We had Maddie. Maddie was still in therapy, still dealing with her killing of Doug, and I like the fact that he took her out to where she, Doug died so that she can kind of get closure on it. And it was really hard to watch because we got flashbacks to that episode, Fight or Flight, from last season when Doug obviously captured her and she escaped and then he chased her and they attacked each other and she eventually killed him. It was really hard to see that. But I like the fact that she got some closure on it and was just basically like, I forgive myself for killing you. I forgive myself for staying with you, but I'm leaving you here. You know, I really like that moment because anyone that's been in that sort of relationship, you've got to have that kind of moment where you say, look, I'm leaving it. I'm leaving your this relationship behind. You're not having the power over me anymore. And it's really powerful. It is powerful. And I like the fact that she... Because people won't understand it unless they've been in that relationship, kind of relationship. When she said, I forgive myself for staying with you. Like, it's not their fault because you're brainwashed by that person to think that, that the only hope you've got is like a relationship and that you deserve everything you get. But ultimately, you do choose to stay with that person. And I know from my experience. So I like the fact that she said, I have to forgive myself as well as forgiving him. I thought that was really powerful because that is pretty accurate. And I liked, I liked that a lot. And I like the fact that she realised that she was the one holding on to the memory of him. And she was letting him have the power over her because it happens. And I think it's really important for people to watch that because I know before... A specific relationship that I was in, I didn't understand abusive relationships, I didn't understand why people would stay, I didn't understand what would make you stay with someone who's doing that to you, like, how stupid are you to stay, then things happened in my life a long time ago now, and it made me realise things, right, let's put it that way, <laughs> um, so I think that's really powerful, and people will, who maybe have never been in that relationship, who don't understand, should do more research on it, and kind of, because that is really powerful. I like the fact that book and Bobby are, like, really good friends again now, and I like the kind of reverse roles of the two, where, obviously, Bobby was the one in charge when Book was ill, and he was making sure Bobby uh, Book was okay, and obviously was quite harsh on him at times, 
And I like the fact that now that Bobby's potentially ill, although we learned in the episode that he's fine, hopefully, touch wood, he is fine. Buck was the one that was asking all the questions and saying, like, have you done this? Has this happened? Has this happened? And the reverse roles, the fact they're close enough again to be able to do that, and also the reversal of roles, I think that's quite cool. I, like, I thought that was quite sweet. And it's just nice to see them. And had some nice moments when, like, Puck said, like, you're, you're the most important person in my life. I don't know what I'd do without you. Like, please get checked out. And he did, and got the text at the end of the episode that he's fine, everything's fine. So hopefully that's that's that storyline done. I hope. <laughs> we had the really sad, sad storyline where the boy, his, his mum had, like, a heart attack, I think it was, and on he had to do the CPR on her, and had to be on the phone, and it gave me a flashback of... I won't spoil things, but let's say there's a certain show where someone has to try and save their mum's life. It's traumatic, let's put it that way. Uh, if you know, you know. And it gave me flashbacks of that, of crying over their mum's body as they're trying to do CPR and stuff, and it's awful. And it's like most people's worst nightmare. It really brought tears to my eye how he... I mean, it's funny, now that I've done first aid training for my jobs, that I've done in recent, like, past couple of years, watching people do CPR on shows makes me laugh a little bit, because when you talk to your CPR training, you talk, you, she did say on the phone, you all your body weight, you have to put as much pressure on you can, and that's true, but when you watch them doing it, and they're just, like, basically pressing it a little bit like that, it makes me laugh a little bit, because that's not how you do it, because you have to be really, really aggressively forceful, and it's, if you watch someone properly do CPR, it's really violent. And we watched a video when we did first aid training of like, the proper way to do CPR, like properly, properly. And they were shoving so much pressure on that body. The whole body was like moving around. It was really aggressive. And then when you had to do it yourself, we had like these dummies. We had to press it and you'd, do, you'd hear like a little, I think it was a certain colour that the light would come on or it was doing a certain beep, I can't remember. Every time you did it right. And the amount of force you had to put behind you, probably like, <laughs> to try and get like, this, the right rhythm and the right force of CPR, it's so aggressive. Uh, but it was really sad watching the kid trying to do it, and luckily the woman was okay. He had to go into a home briefly, a group home, but luckily the woman was okay. He helped save her life, possibly, I hope. And, um, yeah, it was just a really sad scene. You don't want to ever see a kid go through that, or be a kid going through that. That was awful. But luckily she was all right. It's okay. If she died, I would have been traumatised, but she was okay, she was a girl, he went to a group home, and I thought for a second it was going to be, they were going to let him go and stay with, like, Hen and that, because the way they, they said, we've got too many presents, and this, oh, it's a shame this guy's in a home, also, we've got too many presents, but what I liked is that, because I don't know if that's <laughs> entirely legal anyway, they let the whole group home come to the fire station on Monet, and gave them all a present, that was really sweet, and it led them to kind of go, oh, there's lots of people that need fostering, hmm, we've been waiting, for, we've been waiting for the kid for a while, hmm, and then Hen was like, oh, have you ever thought about... And then Karen interrupted, we've got an appointment on Monday, <laughs> whenever it was, <laughs> January 3rd. I think that's really sweet, and it's... I like the fact that they've moved past what happened with the IVF enough to think about this option, because obviously fostering's always an option. They wanted their own kid, fostering's the next possible option to them, and I like the fact that they're going through that route. I think it's really sweet. And great, because there's lots of kids in foster services that need help, and I would say to anybody who wants a kid that can't do it naturally please foster, please foster, I know people want their own kid and they get that, but fostering is such an important thing, hello sun, it's very bright outside today, it's, it's freezing cold, oh my god it's very bright, it's freezing cold outside but it's very very bright, okay if I shut the curtains completely it's too dark, so, oh god, bear with, alright that's the best I can do, it's very very bright outside all of a sudden, so I apologise for the white face, but um. Yeah, I really enjoyed that scene. I guess the last ones really talk about, like, Athena and Michael. So, Michael was going through a lot. He was, like, waking up in Athena's bed. He had these headaches, I think he said, sleep-deprived. And he walked through that pane of glass. And what I love about this whole thing was that at no point in any of this did Athena or Bobby really judge him for anything. At first, they said, what I said is, have you been drinking? He hadn't. But then what I loved is that when, he woke, when Athena woke up and he was in the bed, they never shouted at him, they never screamed at him. They just kind of said, like, are you okay? Like, what's happened? And it would be so easy for Bobby to come home and I think to go, yeah, my ex-husband's in my bed. For him to lose it at Michael, like, what are you doing in my wife's bed? Why are you here? Blah, 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 blah. It's like an invasion of privacy, which it is. Obviously, we'll learn why towards the end. But 
It's, yeah, my eyes are so bright. <laughs> it was all building up to like a really tragic ending and I like the fact that they were so supportive of him the whole time and how when he was in hospital, Athena went to help him and he lied to her at that time. I knew straight away when he said it's just like a sleep deprived thing, like I'm okay. There's got to be something else going on because there's a difference between being sleep deprived and being a bit cuckoo because obviously you got a bit delirious once you sleep deprived. To It just didn't feel like that was going to be enough for the show because the show likes to put the knife in and twist it and twist it, and twist it, and twist it, it did, right when, throughout the episode, we'll be having this whole Athena, not feeling very Christmassy, and they're trying to help her, she made this huge Christmas dinner at the moment, they brought this foster family to them, this whole group home with their huge dinner, presents, happiness, music, lovely, great, happy, I knew there was a twist coming, something to make us feel sad, and we found out that Michael had a tumour, awful, <laughs> Bobby's okay, Michael's got a brain tumour, it's not what I expected, I expected to have a bit of a, a thing about Bobby this episode where we found out Bobby's got a ca cancer after all. But actually, no. Just to make us feel even worse, Bobby's fine. But actually, Michael, the one that's been feeling alone and left out and obviously very lonely at Christmas, has now got a brain tumour. So thanks, 911. Thank you very much for that. <laughs> I like the fact that you told Bobby because they're good friends and that you had to tell, him, tell someone. He's a lot of pressure to put on Bobby. So hopefully, by the time we get to the next episode, he's come out about what's happening because it's a lot because it's a lot a lot i don't know how long the break will be in terms of like timeline of the show but he said he was going to get seen in a couple of days so maybe like the next episode he'll be in treatment fingers crossed i hope i hope so because i like michael a lot and with how he's been feeling so lonely i feel really feel for him and hope that he gets the help that he needs but no doubt athena will be around to help him and support him as will all the family including bobby and everybody else so sad but I knew, something, I knew something was coming. I really did. But yeah, that's the last episode of 9-1. I'm going to be watching for about 10 weeks while we watch the first season of Lone Star. It's going to be weird not spending time with these characters. We've got a whole new cast of characters to hopefully fall in love with like I do these ones. I know it's probably quite a different show, but like any spin-off, I'm going to go into it as if it's a brand new show and just enjoy it as much as I can. I know it's quite popular on YouTube. I constantly get comments saying, react to Lone Star, react to Lone Star, react to Lone Star. So I'm going to be reacting to Lone Star finally. We can stop with the comments. And yeah, I'm excited to jump into it. I'm going to miss these characters for 10 weeks. And I'm excited. I'm going to be really excited when we get back to this because I was halfway through a season, which feels weird to stop and watch something else anyway. But, you know, I'm watching it in the, in the order that it aired just for the sake of if there's any crossovers in the future seasons. I'll be watching it as it was intended to be aired on the telly. So, yeah. That's what we're going to do. Next week's going to be the first episode of Lone Star, the pilot. Don't know what to expect. Obviously, it's in Texas. And I just expect it to be similar, but different. So similar kind of multiple different things they go and do every episode, like the different cases. But a, a wide, diverse cast of characters. I know there's a gay couple in it. So yeah, let's just, we'll go into it next episode. I'll talk a little bit about what I know before I start the show, which is virtually what I just said. But yeah, next week will be the first episode of Lone Star, so I hope you enjoy. As always, my name is Scott. I hope you guys are well. Taking care of yourselves, staying safe. If you enjoyed the video, leave some comments down below. Let me know what you thought. Subscribe to my channel if you're not already. And if you are watching on YouTube, I want to watch the first few episodes of Lone Star. Take a look at the Patreon link down below for the full reactions to this episode. Thanks for watching, guys. Take care. I'll see you all very soon for the next episode of 911. Well, the very first episode of 911, Lone Star. Bye, guys. Take care. Stay safe.